In this video, I'll show you how I built this touchscreen overhead console running Android Auto on Raspberry Pi for a little over a hundred bucks. So I pulled everything all apart just to tie up some loose ends and I thought I'd give you a tour of all the components and how this is put together before I do a final install here and give you the full tour. So the system is based around the Raspberry Pi 7 inch touchscreen display and I bought this solely to use as a rear view camera display so that we can uh, see behind us when we're backing up and also on the highway have a good view of what's behind us. But then I stumbled on this other open auto project and it really all came together into a really slick system. So I thought I'd share that with you. So, 7 inch touchscreen display. They're about 80 bucks in the US and uh, easy to find. Links in the description. To the back of that, they have provisions to mount the Raspberry Pi 3, which is about 50 bucks. You'll need a micro SD card uh, to hold your operating system and store files. Any 16 gig or, or bigger card will work fine. Um, I've soldered these connections on so that I have a single connector and that's all you need. Uh, this is approximately double DIN size. So for those who don't know, this is our stereo, which I'll be using to amplify the audio. Just going in, I'll explain that later, but you can see it's approximately the same size. And in fact, if I take this uh, stereo out or slide it back in its original position, the screen will fit right in its place. Although I've chosen to mount it uh, in an upper console, as you can probably tell already. So the way I built that, it's just made from scrap plywood parts I had around. And inside I've mounted a 5 volt, 5 amp regulator, which converts the vehicle's 12 volt power supply power down to 5 volts, which is what Raspberry Pi and this display run on. And then along here I've embedded magnets and some really poor double-sided tape, which is good because it doesn't stick. It just kind of holds it there firm. And that's good enough for now for, for initial testing. The other thing is I have a power button I've put in the side here to put it to sleep and wake it up. And multi-purpose button I can use for all sorts of things. Additionally, I have this wireless USB keyboard that I can use to do any maintenance I need to do. Uh, you're going to need a cable to go from your smartphone to a uh, to the USB connection and something that's not needed but I splurged nine dollars on is a USB sound card. The Raspberry Pi does have an audio output but its amplifier quality is really poor and it has both audio out and microphone in which is great because then you can hook a cheap lapel mic to that and use all the voice commands, which I'll show you here in a bit. And of course, the backup camera. So I'm demoing today with this Raspberry Pi official camera. They're super small, cheap, 20 bucks or so, but they only have uh, a six inch cable. So I found a fellow in France who made these little adapters I'll show you here that have uh, the connection for this ribbon cable to HDMI. So I bought a cheap 30 foot HDMI cable, which I can use to extend that camera right to the back of our vehicle. But for today, I'll just be using a, actually a six foot ribbon cable I have here, I can show you. So we're inside the truck now, and uh, these are the wires coming down from the headliner. I punched these two holes with a copper pipe that I heated with a blowtorch and punched a hole in there, measured to the center, and as luck would have it, there was a hole in the cross member right there anyway, which fit a nutsert, which I pressed in there, which then now I have a threaded quarter twenty hole. Uh, the wires coming down here are, looks like a con convoluted mess, but it's simple enough. Got power, signal wires from a switch, 
switches on my shift lever I'll show you in a bit, a USB cable that runs to a four port hub behind the stereo, the ground, and this is a six foot camera ribbon cable which will transition to the HDMI cable uh, that runs to the back of the truck. And that, of course, all runs through this plywood box that I made, spray painted black. So it feeds through there. Let's boot it up. I can manually power it on with the button, but it'll also power on when I turn on the ignition. And that will also turn on the stereo, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so I have uh, mine set up to automatically boot right into Open Auto so that I don't need to do anything. But I just thought I'd show you for funsies. Uh, there is a full GUI in here to do whatever it is I just selected to do there. But uh, basically, mine goes directly into Open Auto and it sits at this screen until you plug in your phone. And when I do that, it automatically connects up and launches. And so this is the home screen for Open Auto. Uh, here it shows your recent calls and music and the weather and so on. Shortcut uh, tile for the music. Navigation. Uh, here I could say, get me directions to North Battleford. North Battleford is one hour and 20 minutes from your location by car in light traffic. And then it queues up all of the turn-by-turn -turn nav on this side once you're moving. Um, so that's easy enough. Phone. Fun. Super fun. Home screen. is home screen type stuff. Music controls. <laughs> Yeah, so that's pretty straightforward. So one of the things I wanted this for originally, and its primary purpose really, is uh, the rear view camera. That's why I bought the screen, even before I learned about Open Auto. So to do that, all I have is a raspy vid command line in a script that's being monitored by a GPIO pin. And so when I press this button on the shift lever, it switches to a full screen, full opacity, rear view camera. Now this is just taped on the back of the cab right now, but once I get it on the back it'll show the road squarely. But uh, you can see here, full screen, full opacity. If I press it again, I get full screen, half opacity. So it's transparent to touch, so anything I do to the map, like this, it uh, is transparent. I may have to, s to play with the opacity to get it just right, but you get the idea, and then press it again, and I get a small picture-in-picture picture while maintaining the navigation controls. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to be able to have ultimate control over was the screen brightness, and that's not something I saw with cheap off-the-shelf rear-view camera units. And uh, so with, a, a again, a very simple script, which I'll link to below, just for everyone to have, uh, it just cycles through three brightness settings that I've prescribed. So this is full brightness, half brightness, and 10% brightness. And that's not just dimming the pixels, that's dimming the backlight. So that's going to be really nice if we get stuck driving at night. We can have the rear view uh, camera still on, showing whatever's behind us, but without having the display lighting up the whole cab here. The rear view uh, cameras 
that's enough for part one. If you have any questions about anything I didn't answer or cover well enough, please feel free to leave them in the comments below, and we'll address them in the part two video coming soon. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. into that thing. So let's get started on installing this thing into that thing. Alright, very good. Check, check. <laughs>